Hi guys, welcome to another Eidolon video. Today we're going to be looking at construction and my information has come from an interesting source today. So uh, I was I was going around main discord and noticed a user by the name Pancakes and he's uh, probably the best construction player in the game. So I threw a few questions his way just to pick his brain and find out how to maximize this skill. Uh, let's talk about it. Before I say too much, remember to like, share and subscribe. It really, really helps this channel to grow and build a community. I need your help, guys. So, construction, how this works. Now, um, I've been given builds that are that can be used for up to three squires. Okay, and I will I can run through those as we go, but the premise for them is very similar. Now, construction is very expensive at the top end. And the reason is because you need to buy all of the premium cogs. Now, if I remember rightly, these can cost somewhere around about 10,000 gems. So it's an investment. But by getting all eight of them, um, you unlock two locks of Escogia, um, which is a you know Yugo reference, and uh, you can you can get better gains. Now, the general idea. Is that you're going to put your squires in a row you're going to surround them with the premium um, yin cogs that will give the best buff around them for XP and then you're gonna create your two circles elsewhere um, pancakes has put them in the bottom bottom side just so it looks nice and uniform I quite like this build and it's a great way to sort of stare from now if you can't afford the premium then just replace them with the best XP buffing that you can um, and we'll explain that a little bit more because what you might also notice is outside of the premium surrounding your character you have cogs that point in a direction so the ones above will point down the ones to the right will point left and there's corner cogs now the reason that you use these is that they can have two lots of XP buff so what you have in any cog is you have like a normal normal set of stats so this might be you know XP build rate flaggies per hour and then underneath you can get bonus bonuses depending if they're a directional pop now the ones you're going to look for are the ones that give up to 65% XP boost okay that's the maximum buff you can get if you manage to fill this whole square around it with that, you're doing great. All right, it's going to be a massive increase to your XP. More levels will mean more cogs. More cogs will mean more levels, and it cycles through. Okay. Now, how do you get these kind of cogs? You're going to play a game that some people call Cog Clicker. Um, it's not the most exciting game, but it is a grind that is needed. So what you will in essence do is you will put your um, put your squires into the very bottom cogs as soon as you unlock them and you will start cricket creating cogs as quickly as possible. Now the ones you're looking for, um, you can toggle it up in the top so then it only shows your XP rates. The ones you're looking for are the ones with high XP rates and directionals. Okay. And the reason again is those directionals, you need them to surround the cogs. You also get directionals that cover a whole line. And what you're going to do is put those in every single line leading up to your character. <laughs> Anything that doesn't fall into these lines or surrounding cogs or the Excogia, you're going to just replace with the highest XP percentage that you possibly can. Why is XP so important? Again, XP means more high, means a higher construction level, which means that you can get more cogs. All right, the higher your construction level, the better quality the stats are in the top of the cog. So remember how I said the bonus stats can max out 65%. The top stats can go higher. You can actually see on my, I can actually show you on my build, I've got a cog that's got 110% on it. So higher levels mean higher stats. Now. Do you need to stay with XP? Um, from what Pancakes has told me, XP is the best for this skill. However, 
He has also said that he has a build set of cogs that he tra changes out if he needs to build something super quick. So, if you're looking to get up your um, construction levels from the rift, this might be worth getting a second set of cogs. Be warned, these cogs take a very long time to get. Okay, so first tip people may not be aware of is there is a bonus on some cogs that says flaggy rate per hour. These need to point at a flag. Okay, so wherever your flags are on the map, if you haven't unlocked your full full map, your full layout yet, um, these need to point at them to actually do anything. So if they're not pointing at them, then you are not gaining that bonus. Make sure to use these because unlocking some of these parts are very, very long and tedious. The next tip is a bit of a strange one. And it's actually that whichever, whichever of, so if, if you're using a Divine Knight as your active class, that Divine Knight will actually get less XP in construction than any inactive. It's a bug in the code, no one knows how it happens, and we don't know if it's gonna get fixed. So, what you can actually do is if you've got two Divine Knights, flip flop between them, so active one while the other one gains construction, then swap and active the other while the other one gains construction. Or the best strategy for construction XP is to actually use a melee class actively that isn't a Divine Knight. So your Blood Berserker. Now, this is a bit of a weird one because Blood Berserker is not very good actively. But if you want to maximize your construction XP in, in terms of min-maxing, that's the strategy to go. And the reason is because the active character doesn't get the melee character bonus, but your inactive ones do. So your Blood Berserker will activate that and then your Divine Knights will get the XP in construction. Another tip is that if you want to truly min-max your construction, you can actually snapshot the Obols. So what you can do is put the Obols into your build if you then go into the gem shop and come back, you will have snapshotted your obols. You can then change them to a different set of obols. Um, this is interesting. However, I've been told that you cannot change screen once you do this. So what you may want to do, for example, is set your divine eye up to statue farm, put on your construction obols, go into gem shop to snapshot it, come out, and leave the Divine Knight uh, statue farming. With this way, you're gonna get the most construction possible and better gains. So, uh, yeah, who knew it? You can actually snapshot them. Also, a little snippet of information for you that the uh, Soy Nothing bonus used to be called Class XP. However, uh, Lava couldn't get that bit of code to work. It, it did nothing, so he just implemented it as doing nothing. Um, another interesting thing for you is do not bother trying to get the 2500 levels in construction. Pancakes has told me as the top player with construction that it's going to take him probably over a year to reach it. He's at 2400 at the minute but reaching 2500 is ridiculous. Um, if you can share this with Lava and let's see if we can get this lowered to a more reasonable number. Uh, this is this is something that he seems to be doing recently, which is he aims at the pinnacle of players and it's just unrealistic for the majority of players. Anyway, if you found this, this information useful in any way, shape or form, please like, share and subscribe. Until next time, you've been amazing. Take care.